Dr. Scott, what inspired you to write America Fooled? Well, I've been doing a lot of work in the medical research area. And of course, because of my background in psychology, medical mm -hmm. research as it relates to the mind. And when I looked at the antidepressant studies, I was amazed. Okay. The antidepressant studies are unlike any other research in the medical field. Hmm. Uh, the quality of the studies is worse. Uh, in all other areas of medical research, you have what we call objective endpoints. Okay. And so you can measure, actually, something objectively. You can assign it a number. That's it's not true with depression. We basically ask, how do you feel? If you're oh. doing heart disease research, you can I measure see. something related to blood flow. If you're doing mm -hmm. cancer research, you can measure white blood cell counts. Uh, but this is not true in the area of depression. So it's not physical, it's emotional. How well, do you feel? Yeah, that's how we basically are asking. Uh, that, that's the end point that we're measuring. How do you feel? And of course, that can be manipulated. Mm -hmm. And consequently, uh, the studies that I was looking at, I was amazed to find that the quality of the studies was unlike studies in all other areas of medicine. Uh, they were very, very poor studies. They were not fair studies. They were not honest studies. Mm -hmm. uh, they were clearly manipulated studies. And so that's what really offended me. That's what got me on this issue, made me decide I had to write about that and try to educate physicians and the public about this issue. So you picked up on certain dishonesty? Is that what you're saying? There was a, a theme like that? Well, if you, if you look at the studies mm -hmm. that are behind all the antidepressants that are people taking today, they are dishonest. There are 47 studies used to get approval mm -hmm. of the first six antidepressants. Uh, among those 47 studies, 25 didn't just use an antidepressant compared it with a placebo. 25 of those studies used an antidepressant plus a sedative, a chloral hydrate. In other words, they're wanting to find out how this drug does compared to a placebo, but they're adding a second drug to the study. Why are they doing that? And the answer is because antidepressants often cause some agitation. If you mm. look at the package insert, the PI, that mm -hmm. comes with these right. drugs, you will find that these drugs all admit that. Uh, they will note a certain percentage of their mm -hmm. subjects develop some agitation, some nervousness within X number of days. And so to mask that, they would give a chloral hydrate. Well, of course, the question then becomes, what's helping the person? Is mm -hmm. it the antidepressant? or is it the anti-anxiety sedative type of drug? Which the chloral hydrate is, yes. is an anti-anxiety, okay. So did your mind just scream bogus when you started reading these studies, that like, this is just not true or valid? Absolutely. Uh, I was amazed. I was really amazed. I thought that in the area of medical research, you'd expect all studies to be done in a way that's fair and honest. Uh, I found out that was not the case at all, that there are many different tricks that were being used. Uh, that were not fair, in fact, were just outright dishonest. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you have, in virtually every antidepressant study, you will have the subjects gathered, but these are not typical subjects. It's not the subjects who will be taking the drugs in the real population out there. Uh, they exclude anyone, for example, who's ever been divorced. They exclude wow. anyone who's ever had any kind of arrest record. Mm -hmm. They exclude women. These are studies of men. Now, who's going to be taking these drugs? Mostly women. So you look at the subjects taking the drugs. Well, it doesn't reflect the population. A good study should be basically a group that reflects the population that you intend to take the drug in the end. Wasn't the case. And the examples of this are many. So mm -hmm. the, the drug studies were not fair at all. And that's what inspired you to go to great length, I'm sure, in research and writing to, to develop this book, right? I think that uh, it was very important that more people be aware of what's behind those drug studies and what can be done to help with depression. So I wanted to produce a book that would deal with those things. So to alert the public and to offer some alternative help. That's right.